show charge and we can reasonably assume that the current is going to be flowing radially out. So our current is going through in the direction of R. If we assume it starts in the center here, we could say that our current has a distant travels a distance r. So our, we're going to say that our e path is r because the current flows in the direction of the e field and the e field is also going to be pointing radially out. Now the charge is going to be distributed over the surface area of the sphere. So the area over which the e field is distributed is 4 pi r squared. Now if we look at our chart here, we see that this line is labeled E path, so it will label it R. And this line is labeled E area over E path, so we will label that as 4 pi R. Next, we need to know what this line is here. It's labeled B path, but we also know that it's the volumetric density of flux E. So flux E divided by its particular volume should E be dB dt. And flux E, <coughs> and we have flux E, which is E times the E area. Our expression now looks like E times E area over volume, which is E times 4 pi r squared over 4 thirds pi r cubed. So this distance B path is just r over 3. We'll label it R over 3. And as <coughs> we see, is, this is going to do this is E times surface area over volume. Okay. Now, we want to. Repeat this pattern of lines further down, so this will be 4 pi r, and this will be r, and this will be r over 3, and this one up here will be r over 3. And that maintains the constant that any three lines you cross consecutively gives you the same volume. Okay, now we're ready to fill in stuff here. We know that this is simply mu naught i. And this is mu naught i over r over 3. This would be mu naught i 1 over r over 3. The path was r over 4 pi r squared. And then down here, it's mu naught i, 1 over r over 3, 1 over 4 pi r squared. And go one more down, mu naught i, 1 over r over 3 squared, 1 over 4 pi r squared. Okay, and then we can spread these constants across here, changing i to q, di dt, d squared i dt squared. I'll start here again and we'll go up. This is mu naught i r mu naught i 4 pi r squared.
squared and mu naught i four thirds pi r cubed, which is just z times of i. We come down here, we see this is z over the volume. And here this would do something to be over the volume. Okay. Next, we will interpret some boxes here. Um, well, we will interpret sort of an interesting question. We've seen before that flux E in sort of a static view of things is Q over epsilon naught. Static or potential view. And then we have also seen we have on our chart here flux E is mu naught di dt times E area. And this is a dynamic or kinetic view. But in either case we're talking about the same amount of flux E, the same flux E, so we'll set them equal. Q over epsilon naught equals mu naught di dt e area rearranging sum you get uh, c squared over e area equals di dt over q and if we assume that q is periodic angular function omega, angular frequency omega, then this equals minus omega squared. Okay. And this is true for any geometry where you've got your area here. Now there are other frequencies that show up on the chart as well. There's the E path frequency. There's the B path frequency. C over this, C over that. And there's also the C over E area over E path frequency. And harmonics. And they can also be excited at harmonics. That's generally the case. 